The year 2002 was a significant year for the Nagas. In the July docks between NSCN, IM and Government of India, uniqueness of Naga history is recognized by Government of India in Amsterdam. Now, many people are confused with this term unique history. Well, of course, every race, nation, ethnicity and people have their own unique history. While in the case of Nagas in India, recognition of unique history, unique history means Naga Hills or Naga domain was never a part of India. Now, Nagas fought to the nail with the British aggressors and Nagas told the same thing to the Indian leaders but Indian chose to go against the consensus of the Naga people. As we have discussed in the previous lecture, there is no record of written treaties or agreement that officially transferred Naga Hills to India by British before or after the British departure. The fact is India illegally occupied Naga Hills by force killing thousands of Nagas despite the declaration of Nagalim independence on 14 of August 1947. However, despite all the struggles and hardship faced by the Naga people for decades, now after more than five decades of military operation, India had finally admitted the truth and this was in fact a major development in the Naga national movement. Direct occupation cannot be tolerated in the civilized world, although today we are in the age of globalization, but that should not compromise the truth of Naga people's existence as a unit of political sovereign entity. I believe the only way forward to a prosperous and peaceful Naga society is total separation from India. And nothing more or less than that. The fact is complete and total separation is the only solution to the Indian Naga political issue. And this is the only way ahead. Otherwise, history repeats itself. And if history repeats, the casualty this time will be more worse in both sides than the one we have seen in the past. Nagas are no more a kid and India need to respect that. And of course, Nagas respect the Indians to the highest degree and the lasting and honorable solution can be found between Nagas and India only when India is ready to respect Nagas as humans in the same manner as Naga people do. And I hope that happens soon. Then in 2003 of Jan, another round of talks between Government of India and NSN IM. Again in 2003, from May to December, another round of talks in Bangkok and Amsterdam. And again in 2004, from March to December, another round of talks in Bangkok, Amsterdam, Chiang Mai, Thailand and Delhi. Another round of talks in 2005 from Feb to October in Delhi, Amsterdam and Bangkok. Again in 2006, from Jan to December, another round of talks in Bangkok, Amsterdam. Again in 2007, from March to October, another round of talks in Dimapur and Delhi. And in this round of talks, on 31st of July 2007, ceasefire is extended indefinitely between the government of India and NSN IM. Then in 2007-13 of September, in the 107 plenary meeting of the UN General Assembly, rights of indigenous people is declared. And Nagas are indigenous people, but the term in itself is confusing in case of the Naga people because Nagas having characteristics of a nation, which is more to do with the term indigenous, but as per the definition of the UN, Nagas are indigenous. We will discuss this in more depth in the future lectures. Then in 2007, 23rd of November, a new Naga nationalist group, NSCNU, U for Unification, is formed under the leadership of Azito and Kitolu. And in 2008, from 3rd of Jan, fourth president's rule is imposed in Nagaland for two months and nine days. Then in 2008, 24th of Feb, the FNR or Forum of Naga Reconciliation is formed to initiate peace to stop factional violence among the Naga nationalist groups. Forum of Naga Reconciliation also call upon different Naga factions to form one Naga national government. And this was agreed and signed by the three Naga nationalist groups in the agreement called Naga Concordant, signed on 26th of August 2011. Then in 2000. Eight in April and May, another rounds of talks in Delhi, and in 2009-24, another round of talks in Zurich, and in 2009, from 1st to 8th of June, talks were held between Naga stakeholders, the Indian 
Public Government, that is the State Government. This is Kaplang Let NSN G and NSN. I second move let NSN IM in Chiang Mai, Thailand, under the banner of FNR, Forum of Naga Reconciliation. And this talk came up with the signing of Convenient of Reconciliation in June of 2009. And in 2010, from March to June, another rounds of talk between Government of India and NSN IM in Delhi and Gohima. And in 2012, upon the invitation of the Myanmar government, SS Kaplang led NSN Gay enters into bilateral ceasefire agreement with the Myanmar government. And in 2013, 27 of May, a sort of firm or committee against corruption and unabated taxation, popularly known as AGAUT, is formed with the slogan One Government, One Tax. And this was spearheaded by KK Sima. And in 2015, 27 of March, NSNK unilaterally operated ceasefire with the government of India. And this was followed by June 4 ambush in Gentle district of Manipur, which India even made a fabricated documentary of retaliation out of it. Then in 2015, 6th of April, another Naka political group, NSNR, R for Reformation, is formed under the leadership of Wang Ting and Tika in Mount district of Nagaland. And in 2015, 3rd of August, the historic Naga Peace Accord or Framework Agreement is signed between NSCN, IM and Government of India. And in 2016, 13 of December, six Naga national political groups, popularly known as NNPGS, came together to form working group on the recommendation of NTC, Nagaland Tribes Council. So this were the six groups that came together to form NNPGS. And Kango led NSCN join the working group only later in Jan 2019. And in 2018, 25th of October, Naka Prayer Summit at Agri Expo, Dimapur. And in 2019, 23rd of Feb, Naka stood to the streets of Indian capital, March from Mandi House to Berlin Street in Delhi for immediate, honorable, and acceptable solution. Then, Government of India said. 31st of October 2019 as deadline to conclude Indonaga docks. Then the Indonaga docks caused into deadlock due to some hiccups, much to the discredit of Indian insecurity. But the fact is, Nagas have every right to have our own flag and constitution. Now, the Indonaga political issue would have been solved by the Akbar Hidari Agreement or the Nine Points Agreement, but India on her own interest misinterpreted. Then, Shillong Accord only brought about motivation among the Nagas, and the 16 point agreement was only for few selfish groups of Nagas and also on the interests of India to cover up her crime against humanity, crime against the Nagas. And moreover, the so called agreed position and the framework agreement or peace accord, if they fall within the ambit of Indian constitution, I'm pretty sure there will never be an honorable, acceptable, and lasting solution. That will only be another Shillong Accord and a naked sellout of the Naga people's right. But anyway, let's hope for the best and the younger Naga generation should know that the future belongs to them. Whatever is agreed and signed by our leaders today, that will shape our future and the generations to come. Anyway, that's the end of this lecture. God bless Nagalim. God bless the Nagas. Go Nalim.